Today's October the 28th, 2021, three days before Halloween, out here at Atkins Cemetery in Oklahoma. And as you can tell by this headstone here, it's Halloween. And it's rainy and cold and gray. Six days ago, on October 22nd, 1934, Charlie Floyd, otherwise known as Pretty Boy Floyd, was killed in a field in East Liverpool, Ohio, by FBI agent Melvin Purvis, Jagger Hoover's right-hand man. But we'll get to that. First, we're gonna start at the beginning. The Floyds moved from Georgia to Atkins, Oklahoma sometime around 1915 when Charlie was eight or nine years old. He did petty little stealings, stealing a pig and just being ornery and playing jokes on people and things of that nature. When he was 17 years old, 18 years old, somewhere in there, he robbed the post office in town for $350 in pennies. And the police came about and his daddy said, oh, wasn't him, he was here sleeping. My son didn't do it. At any rate, that just went away, nothing become of it. A couple years later, Charlie got married to a girl named Ruby. She was part Indian. And they had a boy. And this was about 1929, the starting of the Depression. And he didn't want to be no cotton picker because that's what went on around here. He's worked in cotton or supported cotton one way or another. So he went to St. Louis and he robbed a payroll going from Tower Grove, St. Louis area. Tower Grove is a town just outside of St. Louis. Headed to a Kroger store. It was about $12,000. Then he turned around and came straight back home. But when he came into town, he was in a new car and had new clothes and everybody around here knew him. So the police looked into it and found that he had rolls of money on him that still had the bank bands on him, said Tower Grove Bank. So they sent him back to St. Louis and he was sentenced to five years in Missouri State Penitentiary in Jefferson City called The Walls. He did three and a half years and during this time Ruby divorced him so he went straight to Kansas City and that's when he decided that he was going to start over his life of crime but he's going to do it right this time and he started robbing banks, small banks working his way up to Ohio somewhere in Ohio he got caught and was sentenced to 15 years and they put him on a train and was sending him to prison and sometime in the middle of the night he kicked out a window and eluded the guards and jumped off the train and vanished off into the night. He worked his way back here to Oklahoma where he found Ruby and his son. At this time his son hadn't seen him. His son was about five. It was really the first time that he'd really seen his dad. So they moved to Fort Smith and lived under his assumed name and told everybody he was a traveling salesman. While he was out supposedly traveling and selling, he was robbing the banks. Somewhere around 1932, this was the time when there was lots of bank robberies going on because of the depression and he was getting blamed for a lot of banks he didn't rob. 
that's just the way it was they had hired men to hunt him down an ex-sheriff and they had figured out that he was somewhere around Bisbee Oklahoma and when he was going to be there and they set up an ambush there and about two o'clock in the morning policemen that were watching the gate went on into town to get some coffee and at that time Floyd showed up went to the gate but the sheriff was inside the gate behind the barn and he didn't know if that was Floyd or not because surely he was going to get told by the policemen watching the gate that he was coming but they were gone so gunfight ensued the sheriff was killed. The one killing that we know Preboy Floyd committed. And Charlie was shot a couple times himself, nothing life threatening. And off and disappeared he went. In 1933, not long after that, was the Kansas City Massacre involving a gangster named Nash a lot of law enforcement got killed there well pretty boy got blamed for it J. Edgar Hoover wanted somebody to blame and he wanted them bad this was about the time that Floyd and J. Edgar Hoover's careers if you will his Robin career his FBI career were coming up together at the same time so at that time he made a public enemy number one and this would prove to be his undoing. Everybody in the country was looking for him. So Charlie and his accomplice, Adam Ritchie, laid low in New York, around Buffalo, for about a year with their girlfriends. And they got homesick, I guess you could say, and decided they were going to work their way back. So on October 19th and 20th, 1934, they were traveling back across the Midwest, and somewhere in Ohio, in bad weather, they hit a pole, and the car was damaged, so Charlie and Adam decided they would just wait there on the side of the road with a blanket and send the girls to town to get the car repaired. And while they were out there waiting, some locals seen them, or somebody seen them, and called the local sheriff, and he come out, and Adam was quickly arrested, and fessed up to who he was with and Charlie had got away once again. He made it 15, 16 miles away before he came up on a house and knocked on the door and there was a widow living there and he asked her to cook him some food, a meal of some sort and back then they just didn't turn you away. So she made him a meal and he enjoyed it so he paid her some money for it and noticed there was a car out around the shed and Asked if he could get a ride to town, and she called her brother, or got a hold of her brother, and they agreed to take him to town. At this time, Melvin Purvis and a sharpshooter that was out hunting him down, going farmhouse to farmhouse, because they knew who he was now. About the time he was coming out of the drive down the gravel road or dirt road, go wherever it was he was going law enforcement was coming by and they put it in reverse and law enforcement saw it and thought that was suspicious and they went in there and next thing you know Charlie jumped out went running across the field and the sharpshooter put one in his arm and Charlie fell down and got back up and then he put one in his leg and the story goes two ways here the FBI says there was a gunfight and they shot him outright and killed him. But years later, the man that actually did the shoot said, I put one in his arm and one in his leg. But at any rate, they accused the FBI of just straight out murdering him. And right over here is the grave of Charlie Pretty Boy Floyd. As seen on some other videos. Folks come out here and chip pieces off of his headstone. I've never seen anybody that I visited have people 
take pieces of the grave with them. Bad Juju. Charlie Arthur Floyd was born February the 3rd, 1904. Same day I was born. If you notice, if you watched a lot of my videos, that February the 3rd comes up a lot for some reason on our little adventures. And he's got a bunch of pennies there on his headstone, just like the ones that he robbed from the post office on his first crime. Oh, somebody left him a dollar. Put that up there. Right next to him is his mother and father, Mammy and Walter. Mammy Helena, she died in 1978, and Walter Lee in 1929. That's a pretty big spread. And here's his brother, his younger brother was sheriff of this here county from 1949 till he died in 1970. So the same, same family produced public enemy number one and the sheriff of the county. E.W. and his wife, Beulah. She died in 2000. His younger sister is buried right over here and they actually have a photo, a couple photos of her on the grave. Mary Delta. She went by Delta. Died in 1997. Here's a picture of her in her younger years. And on the other side was her husband. And here's a later photo of them. And that's when you can see the resemblance. That's definitely a sister. So here we are, Pretty Boy Floyd's grave. Located in Atkins, Oklahoma. When he died, 30 or 40,000 people showed up here at this graveyard. Tens of thousands of people. All out there across those hills back there. The largest funeral ever in Oklahoma history. The Robin Hood of the Sage. Pretty Boy Floyd. And that's it for this episode. Remember to like and subscribe if you like the video. Subscribe. We make a video every week. I need more subscribers. We're going to go whether you come or not. But I'd prefer that you just signed up. Happy Halloween.